We have all heard of many great heroes in our time, but none have been better than the hero in the time of our long forefathers. Beowulf, the hero of the North, more honorable and braver than any others, for he was no son of a, son of a god like Siegfried, but a man like all of us, mortal, doomed to die. For, driven by his fate, he aborted his sea stallion, crossed the great whale road, braved the daring North Sea, to visit the hall of, of King Hrothgar, Herat, the golden hall, standing high on the hills visible from miles away. From the seashore, a golden beacon, the hay thatch like gold shining in the morning light. Hrothgar and his king and his queen Wealthio, ruling nobly and with honor. Hrothgar, he was a good a king, a good king. But Hrothgar, like all kings, had problems he could not confront. He was faced with Grendel, God-cursed Grendel, greedily loping from the mist-shrouded moors, nightly would come to Heorot, break down the doors, slay Hrothgar's retainers. None could stand against the monster Grendel. Spears would shatter, swords would be blunted. Nothing could stop Grendel. Fate to slay Grendel drove Beowulf to Heorot. Upon arriving to the great hall, the sea guard escorted Beowulf up to the king, who looked upon him with scarce disguised um, uh, despair. My brave warriors could not slay this beast. How can this man, who I do not know, cast from the sea, could, could do it? But Hrothgar sensed the, the heroism and bravery in Beowulf and said, If you can spend one night in my hall and slay, slay Grendel, I will fit my name as a great ring giver, give you the wealth that I have, and bring you into my hall and service. As, as, as was their wont, Hrothgar and his retainers and kinsmen left Herat, afraid of Grendel, but Beowulf and his companions stayed. That night, the moon was dark. Mist shrouded the lands and came up to the doors of Herat itself. Boom. Boom. Grendel hammered the door and splintered it from its hinges. Stepping into the darkness, the talons of the hands of Grendel reached out, grasped the body of the first man, and ripped his bone house asunder, sucked the marrow from the bones, and reveled in the death of the brave man. Grendel stepped forward again, reached out for the next man, but it was Grendel's mistake. Beowulf leapt up from his feigned slumber, and with his strength grabbed Grendel's hand and yanked. Grendel was not used to, to someone standing up to him, Grendel shrieked in pain and agony, wrenched his hand to try and free himself from Beowulf's iron grip. But Beowulf held firm, the strength of his forefathers and the north flowing through him. He grasped and with a mighty effort wrenched the hand and wrist and arm of Grendel from the body. Grendel shrieked and fled the hall in pain and despair, no one ever before standing up to that monster. And when the morning came and Hrothgar and his retainers arrived at the hall, doors shattered and broken, the ripped body of a man and male uh, before them, they assumed the worst. But then they looked up and saw the arm of Grendel nailed to the door and Beowulf standing <laughs> beneath it. But Grendel's arm was, was gone. The monster remained and left a trail of blood back to the mist-shrouded moors. And Beowulf followed.